I am the punishment of God. If you had not committed great sins, God would not have sent a punishment like me upon you. Today, we explore the legendary Genghis Khan, a man who not only conquered vast territories, but also mastered the art of game theory long before it had a name. Genghis Khan's rise wasn't just about brute force, it was about strategic brilliance. He understood the delicate balance of power, the importance of alliances, and the devastating impact of betrayal. His tactics can be likened to the principles of game theory, where every move is calculated, every alliance is a strategic decision, and every battle is a high-stakes game. In this video, we'll break down how Genghis Khan employed strategies akin to game theory to outmaneuver his enemies and secure his empire. We'll see how his understanding of human nature and strategic foresight allowed him to create one of the largest empires the world has ever seen. Before we dive into Genghis Khan's mastery of game theory, let's quickly understand what exactly is game theory. Imagine you're playing a game where your choices depend on what others do. This is the essence of game theory, the study of strategic decision making. For example, think about sharing toys with a friend. If both of you share, you both get more toys to play with. If one shares and the other doesn't, the one who doesn't share gets all the toys. If neither shares, you both only have your own toys. Game theory helps us figure out the best strategies in such situations. In essence, game theory is a framework for analyzing situations where players' decisions are interdependent. These situations are called games and the decisions are strategies. One key concept is the payoff matrix, which shows the outcomes for each player based on their choices. For instance, in the prisoner's dilemma, two criminals can either betray each other or stay silent. The payoff matrix shows the consequences of each choice combination. Genghis Khan intuitively understood these principles. He used strategies that encouraged cooperation and punished betrayal, balancing risks and rewards to outmaneuver his enemies and build a vast empire. By mastering these strategic principles, Genghis Khan played the ultimate game of strategy, much like a chess master calculating every move. To understand how Genghis Khan, then known as Temujin, used game theory to his advantage, let's first explore the concept of stag hunt. This scenario illustrates the conflict between safety and social cooperation. In stag hunt, two hunters face a choice. Team up to hunt a stag, which demands cooperation and offers a substantial reward, or go after rabbits alone, which is safer but less rewarding. The best outcome is achieved through cooperation, hinging on mutual trust. Imagine yourself in their shoes. Would you risk it all for a bigger reward or play it safe? Temujin's early life was marked by alliances and betrayals. One significant alliance was as with Jamuka, a childhood friend and blood brother. Much like the hunters in Stag Hunt, the blood brothers cooperated and started the Mongol Empire. Initially, their cooperation was successful. They combined forces to defeat stronger enemies and expand their territories, much like hunters bringing down a stag. But what happens when trust is broken? As their power grew, so did their ambitions. Trust eroded and Jamuka, feeling threatened by Temujin's influence, broke the alliance. This led to conflicts and without cooperation, their individual efforts were less successful. Temujin knew unity was key. He rebuilt alliances, understanding that only through unwavering cooperation could they conquer stronger enemies. This strategy promised unparalleled glory and riches for all who joined him. He formed strategic alliances with other tribes offering protection and wealth for loyalty. His ability to build and maintain these alliances was crucial, showing that cooperation could achieve far more than individual efforts. This strategy paid off. Temujin's forces grew stronger and more unified. His talent for inspiring trust and cooperation allowed him to outmaneuver enemies and expand his territory. The stag hunt scenario played out repeatedly in Temujin's conquests. Whenever faced with the choice between cooperation and individual action, he chose to build alliances. This approach brought military success, 
and helped consolidate power and establish a stable empire. In 1206, Temujin was proclaimed Genghis Khan, the universal ruler of the Mongols. His rise to power was a testament to the power of cooperation and strategic alliances. By mastering the principles of stag hunt, he united the Mongol tribes and created one of the largest empires in history. But this is just the beginning. As we saw, Temujin's early alliance with Jamukha brought them great success. But when trust broke down, so did their partnership. This betrayal marked a turning point in Temujin's life. After parting ways with Jamukha, Temujin faced new challenges. He knew he needed alliances based on mutual respect and clear consequences for betrayal. This understanding became crucial as he navigated new political and geographical landscapes. One such instance was his attempt to establish peaceful trade with the Khwarezmian Empire. Temujin sent a large caravan of Mongol merchants to the Khwarezmian governor, hoping to foster a beneficial relationship. However, the governor attacked the caravan, killing its members. Temujin's response was swift and decisive. He launched a devastating campaign against the Khwarezmian Empire, showing that betrayal would not go unpunished. This episode was a pivotal moment in Temujin's metamorphosis into the legendary Genghis Khan. It underscored the critical importance of trust and delivered a stark, unforgettable lesson on the brutal consequences of betrayal. After the betrayal by the Khwarezmian Empire, Genghis Khan refined his approach to alliances and conflicts, embracing the principle of an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Imagine a strategy where you start with cooperation, but if betrayed, you retaliate immediately. This powerful approach ensured that cooperation was rewarded, while betrayal faced swift retribution. As we saw with Stag Hunt, cooperation was key to Genghis Khan's early success. But what happened when cooperation broke down? This brings us to our next game theory concept, tit for tat. In this strategy, you start by cooperating and then mimic your opponent's previous move. If they cooperate, you cooperate. If they betray, you retaliate. This is the essence of tit for tat, a formidable tool in Genghis Khan's strategic arsenal. Genghis Khan's use of tit for tat can be seen in his interactions with rival tribes and leaders. He began by offering cooperation and alliances, but he was quick to retaliate if betrayed. This approach ensured that his allies knew cooperation would be rewarded, while betrayal would be met with swift retribution. One striking example was Genghis Khan's relationship with the Khwarezmian Empire. Initially, he sought peaceful trade relations, sending a caravan of goods as a gesture of goodwill. However, the Khwarezmian governor betrayed this trust by attacking the caravan and killing its members. Genghis Khan responded with a devastating military campaign, annihilating the Khwarezmian Empire. This brutal retaliation sent a clear message. Cooperation would be met with cooperation, but betrayal would be met with overwhelming force. The effectiveness of the tit-for-tat strategy lies in its simplicity and clarity. It starts with cooperation, promoting trust and mutual benefit. But it also ensures that any betrayal is immediately punished, discouraging future treachery. In game theory, tit-for-tat is particularly effective in repeated interactions where players encounter each other multiple times. This mirrors Genghis Khan's situation, where he dealt with the same tribes and leaders repeatedly. By consistently applying tit for tat, he built a reputation for fairness and strength. Genghis Khan's application of tit for tat extended beyond military strategy. He used it to govern his empire, rewarding loyalty and punishing betrayal. This approach helped maintain order and stability across his vast territories. For instance, Genghis Khan implemented a meritocratic system, promoting individuals based on their abilities and loyalty rather than their noble birth. This ensured that his most capable and trustworthy followers rose to positions of power, reinforcing the principles of tit for tat. The success of tit for tat in Genghis Khan's conquests can also be seen in his diplomatic strategies. 
He often offered generous terms to cities and tribes that surrendered peacefully, integrating them into his empire with minimal bloodshed. However, those who resisted faced total destruction. This dual approach of rewarding cooperation and punishing betrayal created a powerful incentive for others to align with him. It minimised resistance and maximised the resources and manpower available to his empire. By mastering the principles of tit for tat, Genghis Khan was able to build and maintain his empire. His swift retaliation against the Khwarezmian Empire solidified his reputation as a leader who rewarded loyalty and punished betrayal but his strategic brilliance didn't stop there. As his empire expanded, Genghis Khan often faced situations where he had to negotiate directly with rival leaders. One such moment came when he approached the fortified city of Bukhara, located in what is now Uzbekistan. As we saw with the tit-for-tat strategy, Genghis Khan's ability to balance cooperation and retaliation was key to his success. But what about situations where he had to negotiate terms directly? With his army at their gates, Genghis Khan offered the inhabitants a choice. Surrender peacefully and be spared, or resist and face total destruction. This ultimatum would test his ability to balance fairness with authority. This brings us to our final game theory concept for this video, the ultimatum game. The ultimatum game is a fascinating scenario in game theory that explores fairness and negotiation. Imagine you have a sum of money to split with another person. You propose how to divide it and they can either accept or reject your offer. If they reject it, neither of you gets anything. This game highlights the balance between self-interest and fairness. Genghis Khan often found himself in situations where he had to negotiate with rival leaders. His approach to these negotiations can be likened to the ultimatum game. He would offer terms that were fair but firm, ensuring that acceptance was in the best interest of both parties. A striking example of this strategy is when Genghis Khan besieged the great city of Bukhara. Known for its formidable defences and strategic importance, Bukhara was a city that could stand against the mightiest of foes. Its walls, towering up to 20 metres high, were nearly impregnable. And the Ark of Bukhara, a massive fortress within the city, served as a stronghold for its defenders. The city's warriors were not only highly skilled and trained in various forms of combat, but also fiercely loyal and motivated to protect their homeland. Its generals, seasoned by numerous battles, were adept at employing innovative tactics to defeat their enemies. When Genghis Khan's forces approached, the inhabitants knew they had the strength to put up a fierce resistance. However, Genghis Khan offered them a choice. Surrender peacefully and be spared, or resist and face total destruction. This ultimatum was clear and uncompromising, much like the ultimatum game. Despite their capabilities, the people of Bukhara chose to surrender, understanding that resistance would lead to their total annihilation. Genghis Khan, known for his ruthless efficiency, made it clear that those who resisted would be killed without mercy. By offering a fair but firm ultimatum, he ensured that his terms were accepted, thus minimising bloodshed and swiftly integrating the city into his growing empire. The success of the ultimatum game strategy lies in its ability to balance fairness with authority. Genghis Khan's ultimatums were designed to be reasonable enough to be accepted, but with the clear consequence of rejection being catastrophic. This approach not only expanded his empire, but also established his reputation as a fair yet formidable leader. In game theory, the ultimatum game demonstrates how people value fairness and are willing to reject offers they perceive as unfair, even at a cost to themselves. Genghis Khan understood this human tendency and used it to his advantage in negotiations. By consistently offering fair terms and following through on his threats, Genghis Khan built a reputation that preceded him. Rival leaders knew that his ultimatums were not to be taken lightly, and this often led to peaceful surrenders and alliances rather than prolonged conflicts. The ultimatum game strategy also played a role in Genghis Khan's internal governance. He rewarded loyalty and competence, ensuring that his followers knew that fair treatment was the norm. 
This fostered a sense of loyalty and stability within his ranks. The dust of countless battles settled, the climax of Genghis Khan's epic tale began to unfold. With each city that fell under his banner, he didn't just conquer, he negotiated, offering fair yet firm ultimatums that left his adversaries little choice but to yield. These strategic moves weren't just about expanding his territory, they were about weaving a tapestry of loyalty and control. His uncanny ability to balance fairness with unyielding authority transformed his empire into a beacon of stability and prosperity. Genghis Khan's story is a masterclass in strategic thinking and the application of game theory. From stag hunt to tit for tat to the ultimatum game, his ability to understand and leverage these principles allowed him to build one of the largest empires the world has ever seen.